This video is part two in our three part series on website development. In this video, we take a look at cascading style sheets. CSS stands for cascading style sheets and describes how HTML elements are to be displayed on screens, paper or other media. CSS saves a lot of work by allowing developers to, to control the layout of multiple web pages at once. CSS code can be included directly inside a HTML file if it's defined inside a style tag, but if you do that it will only affect the style of that page. By using separate external style sheets, you can change the look of an entire site by amending one file. External CSS files are linked to HTML files using the HTML link tag. You need to be familiar with the following properties when using CSS. Any other properties that appear in the exam will be introduced and explained within the exam question itself. The OCR specification states that you are expected to be able to use CSS directly inside elements using the style attribute and also to define the styling of elements, classes and identifiers by using an external style sheet. So let's look at each of these points now. So first of all, let's look at using CSS directly inside elements with the style attribute. So here's our HTML document from the previous video, along with a preview of what it looks like when rendered in a web browser. Now here, the H1, 2 and 3 tags have been modified directly in the document to include different style attributes. And you can see that these attributes have changed the visual appearance of the web page on the right. Here we've altered the style of the H1 tag, and therefore changing its colour to red. Now notice carefully here the American spelling of colour, as well as the use of the double quotes, the colon, and also the semicolon in the syntax. All of this is really important. Here we've altered the style of the H2 heading tag. Now we've added a couple of different changes here. We've added a dotted border around the heading, that's border style, and also changed the colour of the border to blue with border colour. Here we've altered the style of the H3 heading tag to change the font being displayed by the web browser. Now notice how the property can actually hold several font names as a sort of fallback system because it's up to the actual browser whether that font is supported or installed. If the browser does not support the first font, it will try the next one in the list and so on and so on. So now let's take a look at using an external CSS style sheet to define the styling of elements, classes and identifiers. So in this version, we've taken out all the styling that previously appeared directly inside the heading tags. Instead, we've set up styles for the H1, 2 and 3 tags inside a completely separate file that I've called mycss.css. Creating a separate CSS file makes it much easier for us to change styles globally. Now, in order to link together the HTML file with our external style sheet, we use the HTML link tag. You can see, much like the A tag discussed in our earlier video, we need to have a href attribute, which provides us with the path to the CSS file we want to link to. We can also define what are known as classes in our CSS file. Here we've made two different classes, one called intro and another called main. Each class is using a different font colour and font size. Using the HTML div tag, we can effectively divide the document up and apply these different styles to each part. We can now use multiple different styles, all held within a single 
CSS file. A third option would be to use the ID selector, which you can think of as an identifier. Here we've created two separate identifiers in our CSS file called ordered list and bullet list. We can then apply the appropriate identifier to the relevant tag inside the HTML document where we want the style to appear. In this case, we've applied styles to the ordered OL and unordered UL list tags. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How does a browser display a web page using CSS? So that's everything about CSS you need to know for the exam, but if you've got another 30 seconds, please watch the rest of this video. So you can do far more with CSS than clearly we've had time to show you in this video. The website w3schools.com provides a complete online course where you can teach yourself HTML, CSS and JavaScript for free. It includes an excellent web-based code that you can use to write HTML and CSS and instantly see what it looks like in a web browser.